We welcome you into a very special edition of Inside Boxing Live. We're on the road from Las Vegas. At least 50% of this podcast is on the road. I'm Dan Canobio. He is the former world champion Chris Algieri in sunny Florida. I am in Vegas. Haven't seen daylight yet because I've been just grinding nonstop inside of this media center. Chris, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great. Doing great. Doing better than you, apparently. I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not stuck in some Vegas hotel. Yeah, we miss you out here. I know you have some other uh, responsibilities, but I want to let it be known. Chris will be at Munguia versus Canelo. Chris will be at Ryan versus Haney, if that fight happens. Yes. Chris will be at Tank, who will be supposedly fighting Frank Martin. Here in some rumbles around here, June 15th, with Benavidez as the co-main event. That's a spicy meat to ball right there of a pay-per-view. Boxing schedule is really picking up this year. I'm, I'm, I'm getting very excited talking about all these fights that are coming up. Good things, good things, good Chris, things. Dan. As they say, Boxing business. Another great year. As they say, business is starting to pick up. And did I also say that this point. this podcast is brought to you by PPB.com? As if you could not see all the signage I'm behind okay. me. We've got Jim Lampley coming up on this. I, there you go. And yeah, PPV sticker. Uh, on this episode, Jim Lampley will join us, our colleague at PPV.com. Mm -hmm. um, some great stories from Jim, of course. Some insights on today's uh, boxing world. Um, we will be in the live interactive chat on Saturday night for Fundora versus Zoo. It will be me, it will be Chris, it will be Jim Lampley, Lance Pugmire. Go ahead and order the fight via ppv.com. It is the cleanest, the best, and most interactive way to watch the fights. You can stream it to your phone, stream it to your tablet, stream it to any device. And the best part about it, in my opinion, Chris, no subscriptions. We're not asking you to throw down a yearly rate. We're going fight by fight. If you, if you enjoy it, you'll order it with us. It's a great time, Saturday night. Well, our fingertips will be all over that chat. Yeah, I mean, PPV just makes everything so easy. That's, that's the way I've been doing it. The stream is always very, very strong. Um, and listen, like you said, no subscriptions. We live in a subscription world. So uh, having no subscription, no, no strings attached. No strings attached. Beautiful thing. I feel like I'm subscribed to, like, multiple things. Like, if I looked at my, like, iPhone, yeah. it would be like, oh, you're paying for three different Netflix services. You're paying for, like, three different apps. That's not the case with PPV.com. Zero subscriptions. Okay. Let's get into some of the headlines before we get to our final predictions for this pay-per-view. Errol Spence just tweeted out that he is on his way to Las Vegas, and he wants the winner of Zoo versus Fundora, which kind of throws a wrench into what we possibly thought could happen after this fight, where Terrence Crawford was looming at the WBO. I would love to know if Terrence Crawford is on his way out here. That would make things even more interesting. But what do you think about Errol Spence on his way here to Vegas, coming out of, uh, I wouldn't say hibernation, coming out of rest and wants a part, of, a piece of Tim Zoo at 154. Yeah, the big fish is swimming back to Vegas, to the, the big ocean that is Vegas. I'm, I'm, I'm there for it. I mean, listen, if, if the Crawford fight doesn't happen with the winner, I don't mind Spence. I like, I like the idea of Spence at 154. Um, jumping right back into a big fight, I don't know if I would recommend that, but listen, th that guy only likes big fights, so uh, I would not be surprised. That's, that is the M.O. on Errol Spence. Doesn't believe in tune-ups. After the car crash, went right into a Danny Garcia fight. I, I, I'm intrigued. I think if Zhu wins, which he should, um, he's going to get a big fight next. It's either going to be Spence or it's going to be Crawford. One thing I am a little surprised by, if Spence says he's coming back at 154, why is he not trying to get that rematch with Crawford? That's clearly the biggest money fight out there. It just seems like well, um, that, whatever deal they had in place has, has obviously expired. Um, so they would have to come to, together to make a new deal. I think the first one was so difficult to make. But also the momentum shift now in terms of negotiating ability would be way, way, way in Crawford's corner. So okay. I would understand why Spence would look away from, from that, that, that fight at 54. Yeah, because now if, if, if it could freeze Crawford out of this, because he's not with PBC, he's a promotional free agent. Mm -hmm. If Spence can fight Zoo and Spence beats Zoo, Suddenly, he has some more juice at the negotiating table, has some more juice for his career. So that's an interesting part of that. I, I now, think, you're putting on, now you're putting on your manager cap. Look at this, Dan. I'm I know a, you wear a lot of caps in this game. but I'm a regular. I am a regular uh, Keith Connolly. Um, yeah, so I, I think that this fight was obviously intriguing to begin with. Now we're adding in unification. Now we're adding in um, Spence and Crawford, two of the biggest stars in the sport. Uh, on top of it, Zoo is the one that's sitting pretty right now. Zoo is the one sitting pretty, but also don't overlook Sebastian Fundora. 
He's walking around this this media say, center right pretty. now. I mean, he's, in, he's sitting pretty. He's got a. He's got a. It's, it's. I always use the word "tall task" in front of you. He literally has a tall task in front of him. So, Fandor is not an easy easy out for anybody. Chris, as a nutritionist, uh, did you see this? We talked to Sebastian Fandor yesterday. It's on our Instagram right now. He went through his daily diet, almost four thousand calories a day, just to make one fifty four. Yeah, no, he, he's a genetic anomaly. He's got he's got a whole whole different gene set, especially at his age too. Though it's. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's eating up to get the 54. Uh, not to change the subject here, just got word um, that we will be talking to Devin Haney. We're going to head to Devin Haney, the top-ranked gym. Oh. Yeah, we're going to go to the top-ranked gym. Anything we should ask Devin from, from Chris? Uh, from Chris, well, first tell him hello, and to Bill also, uh, like my guys from back in the day. Let's see. Um, I mean, I'm asking him what, what he thinks about uh, Ryan's preparation for this fight. That's, not 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 even what he's saying in terms of his like actual physical preparation. Yeah, that's the question. It doesn't look Yeah, I mean no, I think I think everyone's question is like how is he up here? I'm I'm worried about his physical. I'm worried about are you is he in shape for twelve rounds? Right. Yeah. We'll talk to him about that in just a bit. Other bit of news, uh just got official. Uh Eddie Hearn and Match Room announced Bam Rodriguez will take me on Juan Francisco Estrada, June 29th Let's go. in Arizona for Bam Rodriguez. Now, just he's knocking off one legend after the next, and now he's going up against Juan Francisco Estrada, who has been on the pound for pound list or in the neighborhood of the pound for pound list for years. Bam should be on your pound for pound list. I love this fight. I love it so much. I might go there on my own accord. I'm gonna pay for my flight. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna buy a ticket. Yeah, let's I'm do a, it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy, a, I'm gonna buy a Bam shirt. Uh, I, I love that fight, and I think fight fans, you can't get a better, a better fight right now. I mean, that's that's uh, that's awesome. That's that, that's good news. That's good news for the sport on all, on the whole. Yeah, it's a great fight too. Like Bam should be the favorite, right? I feel like Bam, the favorite. I feel like Bam yeah. should kind of. Estrada hasn't been in the ring in so long. We were wondering if he was ever going to fight uh, a Bam Rodriguez, but Bam, I feel like is ascending. Not saying that Juan Francisco Estrada is not ascending, but I mean the guy's a legend and he's near the end of his career. Listen, Bam's last fight was insane. It was ridiculous. The, the, the skill, the, the the power, everything that he showed that night. I mean, he that puts him as a favorite against anybody, any anywhere near those divisions. Yeah, and one last thing to go back to Spence. We're kind of all over the place, but that's the type of show this is right now. Um, I saw that Errol's rough, rugged, and raw from Vegas. Yeah, baby, that's how we operate. That's how we do it. Um, Errol Spence could potentially be parting ways with Derek James. I was shocked to see that. Yeah, I, I did see that as well. Um, and Derek's very, very busy. And yeah, but that's you know, the Spence guy that brought you been... to the dance. Yeah, but listen, come on, man. How many times have we seen this storyline? The the guy loses, goes on a, a, a forever long win streak. He loses, and then he changes trainers. I mean, that's, that's what guys. It is say. a tale as old as time. Um, I just thought there was a. I don't know. I, I, I it's too hard to. It's. I, I mean, listen. I, I did it. Yeah. Like it happens. You, yeah. you got, you got a disastrous result from one of your fights. Um, you know, and and as the fighter, you only know what what's going on in camp leading up to a fight. Like I, I knew everything. I knew going into my fight with Pacquiao, my camp was a disaster. I knew things were going to change regardless of what happened. Right. Yeah. It's it's hard for me to speak on. I don't know what's going on in their relationship, but they've been together since day one. Like. Derek James has this yeah. stable because of the success that he built with Errol Spence. I don't know if it's a money thing. I don't know if it's a philosophy thing. Who knows? But I, I was a little shocked to see that news. Yeah, I mean, we can only see how that pans out. And listen, it's all, it's all pro, preliminary news right now. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll deal with that when we have to. And let's get into our final predictions for this pay-per-view event. The PVC Amazon era, but we're all going to be watching it on PPV.com. I think we established that. Um, let's go down the list quickly. Just let's go quick here. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on all of these fights because there's a ton of them. Um, we'll start with Elijah Garcia versus Kyron Davis. Garcia, all day. Easily, right? This kid, I think he's the future of the lower weight. Oh, excuse me, of middleweight. He's excellent. I would. He was excellent. I was very impressed with his last performance when he fought on the Canelo, Charlo Undercard. Very, very good fighter. A lot of potential. Um, one of those guys. We're nowhere near his peak. Yeah, he's got a stud at 160. I think he'll get through that one. Fight that I think is going to growing under the radar, and it's obviously now a, a fight that was just made last week. Michael's, uh, excuse me. Bohochek. Bohochek versus Brian mm -hmm. Mendoza. Brian Hunt, Mendoza. Hunt, and Brian, Brian's been in camp. Wait, you think, you, Dude, you, he's wait, been in camp. You're picking Mendoza? I didn't say that, but I said he's okay. been in camp. Let me just let me just hype it up one more a little bit. 
Boachuk, 100% knockout rate. Mendoza, godly chin. Something's got to give, Chris. Who's going to win? Yeah, I, I'm, honestly, I'm going Mendoza. Wow. I think I think he, I'm going Mendoza. I think I think he learned a lot in that Tim Zhu fight. Uh, he went 12 with him. He took some big shots. You know, uh, I, under Salas, he has become a very tricky, dangerous trap setting guy. You add that to the physicality. He's very very strong for the weight class. Super durable, obviously, right. which we're, we're learning each and each and every time out. But I think with Salas, he's like I said, he's starting to set traps, and he's and he's getting. More, much more dangerous. And he's always had good physical strength and good power. He's actually way better at 54 than he was at 47. So, um, and Bocek hasn't been as active. Yes, he's on a 6KO win streak since his, his loss to Brandon, uh, Brandon Adams. But listen, he's, his, his chin has been checked. So uh, I, I got Brent, Brian Mendoza taking that fight, wow. even though it's short notice. Big upset. Okay, then we'll go. I uh, just want one, one word answers here. Uh, JC Martinez versus Cordova. Uh, Martinez destroys him. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Is Arizona Lara taking on Michael Zarafa? This is for a middleweight world title. Hard to go against Lara, even though he's yeah, forty-one Lara. years old and he he doesn't move anymore. He doesn't need to. Okay, and let's get into our co-main. You brought up Ishmael Salas. Ishmael Salas is back with Roly Romero. Roly is the star of this weekend. I'm looking right now and seeing a massive throng of reporters around him. People like him. They gravitate towards him. Roly versus Pitbull is the people's main event. Um, I'll start with my pick. I like... I haven't really th made thought about my pick yet. I'm going Roly. <laughs> Roly with a stoppage. How do you like them apples? Okay. Nice. I'm going Cruz, late round stoppage. There you go. I like when we go against each other. I think that's that's the fight. That, that's just the, 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 the one, obviously, where we like this main event now, that it's got so much on the line. Uh, but this is an intriguing fight. No one seems to be able to pick it. Like, Roley is, is what he is. I, I like that he's mixed up now with uh, back with Ishmael Salas. The thing with Pitbull is we don't know what Pitbull's at. We don't know what he's got at 140. I can't, I can't watch the stench that I saw off that last fight he had um, with Cabrera. I'm edging Roley in a 50-50-ish type of fight. All right, Chris. Why are we all gathered here? It's the main event. Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fondora. I think if you've been following us all week long, you could read the tea leaves. What's your pick? Zhu. How is he going to do it? KO. And when's it going to happen? First six. First six. First six. Okay, you can get some good money mm -hmm. on that. I think he catches him at some point. I think he's he. I think Fondora actually tries to jab, and tries to use his distance. He for thirty seconds. Right, fails thirty <laughs> seconds. Whether it's thirty seconds or three rounds, he gives up on that. Goes back to his bread and butter. Goes back to what he knows best. That's rumbling, and then Zhu finds him in like the seventh or eighth round. Stops him. Spence comes in the ring. Uh, they start jawing at each other. Or that would be kind of the not thing. I don't think Spence would do that. Anyway, they talk about Spence. They talk about Crawford. That's the next one. I think it's a great night of fights. It's a great weekend of fights. It's a great week of fights. Seven title fights this week all over the globe. Yeah, you you, you almost turned it into a Hollywood script writer there. You started writing this, I whole, always this do whole, that. whole tale. I, I, I like that. I like that. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. Um, yeah, no, we got seven fights this weekend. I mean, it, this is this is one of those weekends where you just – Sit back, put your feet up, watch fights, man. I'm, uh, I'm Jack. Yeah, cannot wait. Um, let's throw it over to our special guest, Mr. Jim Lampley of PPP.com. We welcome in our guest of honor, the esteemed Jim Lampley, my colleague now at PPV.com. What a world, Jim. I've known you since I was about yay high uh, in the HBO days, and now here we are working for PPV.com. Of course, you can order the fight via PPV.com. Zoo versus Fondor. We're here in Las Vegas. Jim, how does it feel, I wouldn't say to be back, because you have been back now, to be in the flow of things in the boxing world? Well, it's great fun. It's, you know, like homecoming every week when I come to a boxing match and return to the culture and the ethos that meant so much to my life and my career. Uh, one of the beautiful things about boxing is that as much as any other sport, this is a people sport, uh, fighters fight each other in seemingly vicious knock down, drag out brawls and become great friends uh, as the result of it. Broadcasters become friends across corporate lines because uh, of the experiences and the narratives that we share. Uh, and 
the media culture is constantly evolving according to the advances in electronics and the new ways that are presented to react to the event, speak about the event, respond to the event. You're a perfect example of a product of that yes. because uh, about 40 years ago, your father uh, created something new that advanced the culture and the art of talking about boxing matches and you wind up being both an extension and a representation of that and also uh, an accepted and uh, respected boxing generalist because you've been in the culture all of your life. And uh, I've known you since you were, you know, that kind of a kid. Uh, and it's a, a real privilege to be here again with you to talk about this weekend's upcoming fight. Thank you, Jim. Uh, and you brought up having, you know, how broadcasters from separate networks would get along because it's a brotherhood. Just last night, we all went out to dinner, uh, thanks to PPV.com for picking up the bill on that one. Uh, and Al Bernstein was there. And I always said, the two of you guys, because of, through CompuBox, we worked with Showtime and we worked with HBO. But for all of boxing fans, people, they looked at you and they looked at Al as the voices of boxing, one for Showtime, one for HBO. So to see you guys together, it's always a, a treat for me. Well, and he's a great guy. Uh, you know, I mean, regardless of in which world you meet Al, whether it's his music career uh, or just life in Las Vegas or especially boxing, he's uh, a tremendously fun and gifted person. And I've always enjoyed the time I spent around him. A lot of people in the fan base have over the years sometimes mixed up Al with Larry Merchant. So I've oh, had Larry. people say to me, oh, I've watched you many times with Al Bernstein. And sometimes I'll correct them and say, I called one fight. <laughs> Mayweather Pacquiao, right? One fight in my entire career with Al Bernstein, and that Wild. was Mayweather Pacquiao. Wild. Yeah. Maybe the worst fight I ever called, but I did it with really, Al. Really, really yeah. think it's, I actually watched it recently and was like, this fight wasn't as bad as I remember. The hype was I'm so big. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> the hype was so big for it that it was, it was never gonna exceed that unless there was a crazy knockout or it was a gaudy ward. But it really wasn't that much of a stinker. It just didn't live up to the hype. Well, I'll have to look back and see if my response to that is the same as yours because, of course, I was sort of preconditioned for um, my negative response. I can remember in the two years before it happened, people would walk up to me in shopping centers, on the street, et cetera, et cetera. When are we going to see Mayweather Pacquiao? Of course. And I would say, what is it you think you're going to see? Uh, I mean, why are you so hyped out about Mayweather Pacquiao? Have you never seen a Floyd Mayweather fight? Do you not understand what it is that goes on? This is not about contact. This is about the avoidance, avoidance of yeah, contact. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it was everything that I expected it to be. Uh, and, and maybe the most easily predictable fight ever from the standpoint of who was going to win. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, all of that, in my view, ranked as a disappointment. But it pleases me, it makes me very happy to hear that you say it wasn't quite as dreadful a dud right. as I thought it was. Right. But let's talk about the fights this weekend. Uh, hopefully well, they're not more, as well. Hopefully they're more entertaining than um, a Mayweather and Pacquiao. That's not hard. <laughs> Zoo and Fundora is the main event. Tim Zoo, of course, the son of Costa Zoo, who called some of his fights. Um, what do you see in Tim Zhu? You have a very trained eye in boxing. What do you see in Tim Zhu that makes him special? All-around athlete, well-balanced, can box and can punch. Uh, it could probably fight in either stance, south or conventional. Uh, he, he has multiple skills. Uh, you can see that he's grown up within the culture of the sport. He has a lot of ambition now, or should have a lot of ambition, because he's getting ready to make his first meaningful statement on American turf mm -hmm. in the United States. And uh, as he approaches the fight, number one, uh, one opponent falls out, and a seemingly more interesting opponent there is. Uh, is, is brought in, uh, Sebastian Fundora, who just walked past us, looking like Powering a basketball Inferno. player. Yeah, we'll get to six him in feet, a five and a half inches tall. Uh, and now Zhu, if he wins the fight, he'll be seen as the number 154 pound fighter in the world. And along with that comes a governing body ordained pathway now for Terrence Crawford to move up and fight him at 154. In my book, if you're fighting Terrence Crawford, you're fighting the number one pound for pound fighter in boxing. Yes. So, so this is a big opportunity for Zhu. Tim, I know you're not on, excuse me, Jim, I know you're not on Twitter. Errol Spence just tweeted that he's on his way to Las Vegas and he wants the winner of this fight. 
So it could be Errol Spence versus the winner of Tim Zhu, Fundora, before Crawford, because boxing politics, because that's how boxing rolls. I mean, that's the latest development right now. Well, Spence knows where he fits into the picture. And obviously, you know, if you get beaten down the way uh, Errol Spence was beaten down by Terence Crawford, you need some new pathway that reinvents you. So uh, I give him credit for spotting an opportunity there. Yeah, but I, I believe that, that Zhu versus Crawford is the fight that made this one even more intriguing, this Zhu Fondora fight. Once you add in Crawford, it makes anything bigger. Once you add in another belt, there's two belts in the line now. It's Crawford looming. Uh, two weeks ago, it was Zhu versus Thurman. Who, who, it wasn't, it wasn't peaking the interest. I didn't even of think people. that was real. I mean, I just, you know, <laughs> Zhu versus Thurman. Who cares? You know, I understand he was going to make a statement against an American fighter who had an identity. People could remember Keith Thurman. Thurman hadn't had a meaningful fight in five years. Yeah. So the notion that he could be somehow competitive against a guy like Zhu. I didn't believe that. And lo and behold, predictably enough, uh, Thurman comes down with a an arm injury and is out of the fight, and you wind up with a much more interesting opponent. Even though he's coming off of a knockout loss, he's still the world's only six feet, five and a half, 154 pound uh, body puncher. Let's talk uh, about Fundora. I mean, he's a guy, like you said, he, obviously when you think of Fundora, you think of his height, you think of his size. One thing you don't think about is a jab. The guy does not fight from distance. He likes to stand and rumble. I think that could ultimately be his downfall in this fight. Should ultimately be his downfall in this fight. Uh, you know, if you if you don't have a jab, as far as I'm concerned, you're an incomplete fighter. Uh, and so he's going in um, with a, uh, a half-loaded uh, uh, chamber yeah. as opposed to a fully loaded chamber against a guy who has every weapon. So. It's easy to see the favorite in the fight, but it's also easy to see that the favorite in the fight is getting ready to fight somebody uh, who fights in a style he's never seen before, and that in itself presents possibilities. So whether it's Zhu versus Spence, whether it's Zhu versus uh, Crawford, I think the next fight for Tim Zhu will be one of those two guys, and it will be very big. Another fight. On You're this assuming show. a Zhu victory. I am. I think Zhu's going to knock him out. Okay. I think he knocks him out. Is he next to us? <laughs> I, I think, think he's going to knock him that's out. That's a great way to say hello to the United States of America. Yes. I think he, he stops him somewhere in the seventh or eighth. I think the first couple of rounds get tricky, and then he, he finds him. Tim Zhu finds Fandora, um, and then he ultimately calls out Spence, ultimately calls he, out Crawford. He has to overcome a strange and nettlesome piece of history, which was when Costa Zhu came to fight in this hemisphere, not in the United States, but on the island of San Martin, he shockingly got knocked out by one right hand from Vince Phillips. Classic, an all-time classic. Costa Zhu looks a spitting image of Tim. It's scary how right. much they look yeah. alike. But uh, apparently they, they're on uh, good terms. Uh, he doesn't really talk a lot of boxing, Tim, with his dad. But they are on good terms. He isn't making the, the trip out here. Um, let's get to the co-main. Rolly versus Pitbull. I think it's an intriguing fight. Two brawlers. 90% of their landed punches are power shots. Not a lot of jabs in the co-main. It's going to be a brawl, I think. Right. Leave your jab at home uh, and come to Rumble. Uh, and, you know, real fight fans, people who are uh, fully versed in the culture, very excited about the fight because they know enough to know the two guys and know exactly what you're saying, that this is the Gaddy Ward of its generation. Oh, you really think so? Well, I'm saying potentially. Potentially. Okay. I'm, I'm dreaming. Dreaming. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping for something. Amazon will be very happy. I'm hoping PPV. for a memory that I can, happy. can take home, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, everybody knew that Gaddy versus Ward was going to be fireworks. Everybody seems to believe that Roley versus Pitbull is going to be fireworks. Hey, listen, I'll take that. If, that's, if it's that type of fight, then we're in for a classic. Um, even if it's 50% of that fight, it's going to be a, right. a fun one. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the card. Uh, there's a, it's a loaded card. Sorry, Boachuk is fighting Brian Mendoza. Interested by that one. That's a 100% knockout rate for Boachuk versus a guy in Mendoza who has an unbelievable chin who went the distance who, with Zhu. Knocked went out the Fundora with in his last fight. Right, and went the distance uh, with, with Zhu. So right. he's got a great chin. That's an intriguing fight on, on this card. Julio Cesar Martinez is on this card. You got Arizona Lara, 41 years old, fighting uh, Michael Zarafa. It's a very good card, top to bottom. I think fight fans are going to get their fill, and you're going to be able to follow along with us on the live interactive chat, ppv.com. Ppv.com. Me, Jim, Chris Algieri, Lance Pugmire. Give me a better foursome right there. No, give, I give can't me. give you a better foursome. Can't. Maybe the only thing that would improve that is if you remove Lampley and, and put in put in somebody who's more Listen, fully versed man, at this moment. I but go, I think it's all going to be good. Everywhere I go, 
or every time I bring you up on social media or do some type of content with you, I get the same questions. What's Jim up to these days? We miss him. We want to see him call another fight. Will you call another fight? Do you still have desire to call? I have not fight? been asked by anybody to call another fight. I have, what I was asked to do is to do live chat on ppb.com. Okay. And, and therefore, all of my loyalty and devotion to, at this moment with regard to covering fights and being a part of the communications process is to do live chat on ppb.com with you and, right. uh, and with the other people uh, that we've discussed. Nobody else has asked me to call a boxing match, so if they not, did, it's though. not a part of my consciousness. If they, if you were, if they did, I would have to examine. Okay, it's been what five years, six years. Am I still ready to go with full confidence to ringside and believe that I can see a fight and call a fight in the way that best services the audience? I don't know. I'd have to think about it. But I'm not presented with that uh, proposition. Uh, I don't have to make that decision. Nobody's asked me. How about me and you, we'll pull up some bum fights on YouTube and we'll call them. I think, you know, there ought to be a niche within all of the various electronic distribution systems that now exist. There ought to be a niche for going back and reinventing the old fights. I mean, there are fight fans out there who didn't see Gaddy Ward 1. Uh, Shame on them. There are fight fans out there who did not see Marco Antonio Barrera versus Eric Morales. Uh, these are unforgettable oh, they're on YouTube now. instant legend fights. So we could go them. back and, and recall them, but I'm not sure that we could do better than the original calls. All right, let's go through some fights that are coming up on the boxing schedule quickly. We'll go through them. Um, Canelo versus Munguia. Interesting fight. Um, I was very directly involved in the development of both careers. We brought Canelo's public image along on HBO. Uh, later on, we got involved with uh, Munguia, brought his public image along on HBO. As we were first introducing Munguia to the audience, I uh, took him down to my house in Del Mar, California, took him to the racetrack, uh, the famous Del Mar racetrack, took him in the jockey's room. He was startled to learn that all the jockeys already knew who he was oh, wow. uh, and knew who he had, had fought and who he had beaten, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and he was instant entertainment because He's the best kind of fans fighter. He hits and gets hit. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he, he can do damage offensively and he can be damaged uh, because of a lack of defensive commitment. So most people automatically pick Canelo to beat him because they assume, you know, he gets hit too easily, he's gonna get hit too much. But he brings, he brings something to the party I, too. I he, think it's gonna be interesting. He does have punching power. Yeah. Canelo has a great chin. I believe it's his greatest asset. Yep. If that's still Canelo's greatest asset, he's the very logical favorite in the fight. Mm -hmm. If there's any slippage whatsoever in Canelo's ability to withstand punishment, Munguia can deal punishment. Do you think Canelo fights Benavidez next? Do you think Canelo fights Benavidez before his career is over? I think Canelo is showing right now that he doesn't have any enormous desire to fight Benavidez. That if he could find some logical stepping stone away from that path and go for a couple of other opponents and said, oh my gosh, I'm ready to retire. Oh, whoops, I didn't fight Benavides. I don't think that Canelo would lose a moment of sleep over that. Benavides is a, a punching monster. Uh, and I think he showed that against Demetrius Andrade. I'll be honest, I'll be straight. I thought Demetrius Andrade was knockout proof. Benavides detonated Walked him, through him, exploded him, yeah. you know. So that was a spectacular show. Uh, I'm in love with Benavides as an attraction, and it would be fantastic, fantastic for the sport and for boxing fans if Canelo would take that fight. But I have seen no indication that he's interested. Right, two more fights I want to talk about. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney. A lot has been made about Ryan Garcia's mental health, whether he should be fighting. He says he's fine. Golden Boy says he's fine. You've seen a lot of fighters. You've been around inside the ring, watching them outside of the ring. Do you believe that Ryan Garcia should fight Devin Haney? Well, there's an obvious comparison between Ryan Garcia and Oscar De La Hoya. And I can remember a moment when people thought it would be crazy for De La Hoya to fight Julio Cesar Chavez. And, and he went through Julio Cesar Chavez like a knife through water. Um, so you never know. Uh, it, nowadays, as, as much as I decry it and, uh, and am discomfited by its influences, social media is the way you sell your personality. Social media is the primary vehicle for reaching particularly the young audience, and Ryan Garcia has gotten there. He's on that plateau. People want to see it. 
Uh, at the end of the day, I think Ryan Garcia should probably fight Devin Haney, and the fight will be disappointing to the people who want and believe uh, for Garcia to have a chance, yeah. because the great boxer normally undresses the person yeah. who is not gifted in that skill. You'll be able to see that fight on PPV.com as well. And lastly, Tyson Fury is fighting Alexander Usyk. All four titles on the line for the first time since 2002. Are you excited for that one? Well, I'm always excited for something that represents a meaningful step forward in the heavyweight division. I'm very disappointed in what Tyson Fury did uh, against Francis Ngannou uh, and how he allowed himself to be distracted by doing a vanity reality television show. The instant that you have allowed cameras into your household for something called a reality television show, you have stepped into the world of unreality. Uh, and Fury showed his weakness uh, in that regard. Can he get back on the horse now and be the kind of great fighter that I thought he was and have a chance to beat a real professional who moves, who boxes, who fights at angles, who understands the science? I don't know. There's a mystery in that fight. I could very easily see Usyk outpointing Fury just yeah. the same way he outpointed Joshua. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fight season, guys. There's a lot of fights coming up. Catch them all on PPV.com. Catch us. I like seeing you nod. Okay, then it makes me think that I'm saying something you're, you're interesting. You're speaking good. facts, as the kids say. You're spitting good. truths, as good. the kids say. Happy to hear that. PPV.com is the place to order Zoo versus Fundora. There'll be a live interactive chat that I will be a part of, that Jim will be a part of, Chris Algieri will be a part of, and Lance Pugmire. Make sure to order it at 8 p.m. The thing about PPV that we love, no subscriptions. Clear as a, clear as a, what did we want to say? Clear as a day. Clear, clear as a North Carolina sky is, clear, the, is the connection. Clear as a San Diego afternoon. That's the type of uh, feed that you get on pvp.com. Jim, thanks for the time. and uh, privilege. Talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Jim Lampley, how do you like that? How do you like that, Chris? The guy just turns it on, man. Just turns it on and just, and just is an encyclopedia of boxing. I mean, just a consummate pro, right? We, you and I are watching him as kids. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable that he's back. It's awesome. And he's with us. He's, he's a colleague of ours. Yeah, and we're working with him. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's amazing. Always good to see Jim Lampley. Full All right. Circle. Final thoughts uh, from Las Vegas. Um, I'm ready for this fight weekend. I'm ready to kick off this fight season. I think this is the official kickoff of fight season that we just talked about with, you know, Fury versus Usyk, Ryan versus Haney, Bam versus Estrada, Canelo, Munguia, uh, Inoue versus Neri, Cambosos versus Lomachenko. I'm probably leaving some fights out, but this is the kickoff, and I'm very excited. That's my final thought. Yours? You, you pronounce it weird. Fight season. Season. That's how you always say it. Season. S-Z-N. S-Z-N. Season. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, man. I'm, fight season is on, is upon us. Um, it's going to be, I mean, hardcore for the next couple months. You know, summer we usually get a, a shift and it gets a little bit slower. But I don't know, man. I think I think the Saudi moves are gonna are gonna mess up the schedule in a good way. Yeah. And we're gonna get some random fights in the middle of the summer that we normally don't get, what we did see last year. But uh, regardless, we will be here twice a week with every one of you guys. Uh, we got more inside boxing live. Thanks to the guys right behind Dan right there. PPD I love that. Fight. Great great job, Chris, throwing our sponsor and our, our presenting sponsor out there. All right, Roly versus Pitbull. I'm picking I'm picking Roly. You're picking Pitbull. Uh, we're both in, uh, in agreement that, Z that Zoo is going to stop Fundora just a matter of time. I hope you all enjoy yep. the fights. PPV.com is the place to watch it. Uh, we will be in the live chat. Join us there. Have a grand old time, Jim Lampley, Lance Pugmire, and the whole crew. Uh, that's it from Las Vegas. Protect yourself at all times. Keep your hands up at all times. If you have a steak dinner for me here in Vegas, I'm all ears.